Jeremy Spinell. Now, um, before I get to this uh, actual review, um, the reason that there's this paper is because this is a school library book, um, and so, uh, yeah, and I'm gonna have a lot of references to the summarizer and pretty, because actually the reason I am reviewing this book is because a friend of mine is a very big fan of the summarizer and pretty series and she finished it rereading it like I don't know how many times and she wanted to kind of read a new book that has a similar concept so I did a bit of digging and I remembered this book that I just got a couple years ago in my library and I always check it out every time it's in stock it's such a good book I absolutely love it and I completely recommend it um so yeah it'll have definitely a lot of references because the reason I'm reviewing it is because of the Summer and Turn Pretty series, which I actually have here. So, um, yeah, without further ado, uh, let's get reviewing. So, the description is, Dear Leo, I love beginnings. What better way to start to celebrate than to begin writing a letter to my once and future boyfriend? Starville has moved and left everything behind Arizona, Micah High, enchanted desert places, and Leo. He's all she can think about, and her life begins to feel like a parade of unhappy anniversaries. Then Starville meets her wonderful, bizarre new neighbors, Dipsy, the curly-headed five-year-old who moved in, Betty Lou, who hasn't stepped outside her house for nine years, Charlie, who sits among the tombstones, hot-tempered Alvina with one glittery nail, and Perry Delaplane, the blue-eyed thief who soon lays his own claim on Stargirl's heart. In letters to Leo over the course of a year, Stargirl comes to hope in new places, mockingbirds, donuts, angels, moon flowers, and the winter celeste. That turning point when the dark tips to light. But what's life without Leo? Will he, can he answer the one critical question she asked every morning to the rising sun. In the compassion novel to Scar Girl, Newbury medalist Jerry Spinnell continues his beloved stories in a tale of hurt and healing, promise and revelation, celeste and sunbeams. So um, there are quite a few characters um, throughout this story. Um, and actually there's quite a lot of them, but you kind of do understand them and you got their personality, which is kind of, um, different than, um, the Sunrise and Pretty books. But, um, in my opinion, um, the reason I thought it reminded me a lot of the Sunrise and Pretty is because it's all about this girl who... Um, is in like a love triangle, but unlike the summarizer and pretty, the love triangle isn't the main point of the book. The main point of the book is about her happy wagon. Um, and her happy wagon is like a wagon with that and inside it contains a jar of 20, of 20 pebbles. Each time she's happy, she'll put in a pebble in, and each time she's not happy, she'll take a pebble out. And basically going from the best time of her life, where she had 20 pebbles for a whole, like, two months, basically, to the worst, where she finally reaches zero pebbles, which never happened before, she kind of redevelops herself and rebuilds herself because of these characters and because of that experience. And she soon realizes from all of these impactful people that she's surrounded with um, that... She shouldn't be taking pebbles out just because of this boy and she soon reaches from zero pebbles to 18 which if you think about it isn't that big of like a number difference but if you think about it her point of view it's extremely large like in this is a course of one year um she reaches pep like zero pebbles kind of like here like on like page 
age, I'd say like 34, zero pebbles. Page two, 271, 270, no, 273, 18 pebbles. So you can kind of see that it does have a very big impact, but it's like a very slow graduate because with, with most books, it's like 40, zero pebbles. Chapter three, it's like 98, 18 pebbles. No, it's not like that. It's quite a slow rising book, which sometimes annoys some people, but I personally love. Um, so yeah, and um, with love, um, it does have a very impact, it has impactful meanings, but it's kind of hidden in like a bit of humor and hidden in beautiful words and sentences and metaphors and everything, which is what I really loved about this book and what I kind of very fell for this book and the reason why I reread this book so many times is because whenever you read it it feels like you're reading it for the first time which is something that I truly love about books well certain books because when you get that like feeling it's just so so very ha it makes you feel happy um and that summarized in pretty when I first read it kind of made me feel like that like that weird butterflies like excited feeling when you're going like on a roller coaster or something so definitely um this book is, um, I actually had to search it up, it's this young adult fiction because, uh, fiction romance because, um, well, it has Perry, Delaford, and Leo. Um, in the description, it says, Perry Delaford, the blue-eyed thief who soon lays his own claim to star girl's heart. Um, which you can kind of see how Perry is in that little love triangle and also like um the samurai turn pretty leo and perry remind me a lot of jeremiah and conrad because um leo is like her golden boy which reminds me a lot of jeremiah and there is movies um there's two movies that you can watch on prime um and i've watched them and they kind of look a little bit alike not a lot but like jeremiah and leo they give me similar feelings um and Conrad and Perry are like those troubled, mischief, like leftover kind of boys um, that somehow have like a little soft spot for her. Um, so yeah, they're definitely alike those uh, four characters, but something that's completely opposite is Bella and Stargirl. Bella, in my opinion, is kind of selfish. Um, well, um, and this is just my opinion, Stargirl is very selfless. She's always putting other people before herself. But sometimes you can see Be Belly, Bella, um, putting herself before a lot of important things which she should not have um, in the course of those books. In the course of these books, um, Stargirl is constantly putting other people before herself, which kind of gets you a bit frustrated, but then she soon realizes like, but it does it does really have an impactful meaning um also like um like the opposite thing um belly um is very like in the summer i turned pretty it's in like the love triangle is in like that's the number one point of the book this whole love triangle going on while in this book it's more about that happy wagon and this winter so last but the love triangle is like still in there. And I personally don't like love triangles. I've only read like four books, series and like series um, that have love triangles in them. And the only books I've ever liked were Love and Stargirl um, and The Summer I Turned Pretty. Um, and I love a lot of books. So that's saying definitely something, especially with that topic. So, uh, yes. Now, um, this book was published all the way back in 2010. Um, the movie was published in like 2013, 2014. So it is a quite an old type of writing, but not type of writing, but um, type of like, you can't really, like I said already, you can't really buy it anymore because it's like out of published because of how 
unpopular it is now because it was very popular during 2010 to 2016 like that was its spam um but now it's more of this um if you know Colin Hoover who I love um and Harry Potter is still something but it's not as common as it was before um so yeah which means you can't really get these books, but you can listen to them, and they are two movies on Prime. Um, but in the course of those very the six years where it was popular, um, Star Girl um, and Love have won a lot of awards, and I'm just gonna read them out for you because I feel like these awards kind of show you a little bit about the book. Um, because sometimes with books, it's just New York Times bestselling stuff, like bestseller book. Um, which doesn't really give you an idea, but when it's listed and it won all of like a thirteen awards, you can kind of see like, damn, that book has to be good, right? Um, and so I'm just gonna read this for you. A New York Times bestseller, a Parents' Choice Gold Award winner, a Publishers Weekly Best Book of the Year. An LA Top 10 Best Books for Young Adults, a BookSense National Bestseller, Publishers Weekly Bestseller, a Bank Street College of Education Best Book of the Year, a BookSense Book of the Year Finalist, an ABC Children Bookseller Choice, a New York Public Library Book of the Teen Age, Winner of the Young Hoosiers Book Award, winner of the Garden State Teen Book Award, winner of the Arizona Young Readers Award. Um, so you can kind of see. <laughs> um, if I was really going to describe this book in one word, it'd definitely be like a magical, heartbreaking tale. Because this book is kind of like you're watching a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous fantasy movie while still having that like disappearing away from reality um so i love this book i love the way jerry spinnell writes about it i'm personally team perry i'm team conrad but that's not my type um but yeah so you can kind of see how this book definitely through all these awards are definitely such a good read and so many people have loved this and i really hope that you guys love it too so if you'd like, I can do a uh, review on the second book of the series, which is Star, well, like the first book of the series, which is Star Girl. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.